I chatted with Purple Car Life. We've got the Split Fire 4090 wood chipper here. We're gonna go through in this video today how to start it up, how to run it. And then I've got a couple limbs here that are ready to go in, but I've also got the steel MS271 Farm Boss because I need to do some pre-trimming. These are too wide and too long to go in there without doing some trimming first. So I'll start with the trimming, then we'll start up the split fire. We'll give it a test. So it's hard for me to express emotion, but I am really excited about using the Split Fire 49er. I've never used a wood chipper before and certainly not an industrial one like this. So, you know, you see some of those that are kind of a push mower, but it's also a chipper. This is nothing like that. This is a, a massive machine for industrial commercial work and we're thrilled to have it here to give it a try. So I'm gonna walk through how you start it. There is a fuel shut off down here on the bottom. So as a reminder, Split Fire is a company out of Canada. They make the two-way log splitter, which I'm really impressed with. It splits both on the extension of the piston and on the retraction of the piston so that you're getting double the splitting done in the same amount of time. Now this wood chipper is the model 4090. It has a Honda GXV 390 engine on it. So it's a good, reliable Honda engine. I've already filled it with ethanol-free gasoline. Again, that's the only gasoline I recommend using in anything with a carburetor. There's a fuel shutoff valve that you always wanna shut off when you're transporting this. This can be driven on the road up to 45 miles an hour. And like I mentioned in the last video, if you haven't already watched it, there are option kits for fenders and lights. So in states like Pennsylvania, where you're required to have lights and fenders on something you're towing down the road, unless you're just on a back road, you'd wanna go ahead and get that option with this wood chipper. So I've read through the entire manual, which I also recommend that before you use something, always read through the manual. But it did say in the manual that you should turn the throttle up to about halfway to three quarters to start this engine. I've watched other videos on YouTube where it says a quarter throttle. So I just wanted to make that clear. According to the manual, you need to give it a little bit more throttle to start the engine. Uh, and I actually tried after watching a YouTube video at a quarter throttle and I could not get the engine to start. So. Again, always refer to the manual for the information that you need to properly use equipment. So you can see I do have some PPE on. I've got eye protection. I will also pull my shield down. I do have ear protection built into this helmet. Uh, so you always want to use the proper protection when you're using a machine like this. Um, I don't have gloves on, but it's always a good idea to use gloves when you're working with uh, wood or pieces that you could get splinters. And obviously you never want to reach your hand down into this. This kind of is your barrier. You wanna keep in mind that you shouldn't put your hand anywhere near this while you're operating this machine. There are spinning blades down in there. I have the directional chute on the back. You can just let it shoot out straight down the bottom, but I've actually got this on and I don't have the hitch on it, but you could tow a little trailer behind this and then you would be shooting those chips into a little trailer, so which I think it, is a nice setup. Where does it shoot out if you don't have that thing on? Oh, just straight out the back there. Yeah. So if you did not have the discharge shoot in, that'd be another, never put your hands down by that because you could actually make contact with the blades that are spinning inside there. So this is all greased up, ready to go. There is a reminder right here. This says maximum three and a half. If you look at the literature for the 4090, it actually says a maximum of four inches, but I will keep the three and a half in mind since this particular unit shows the diagram and says maximum three and a half. So to start the machine, there is an emergency stop that you need to make sure is not turned on to start the machine. So to turn it off, you just twist, you see it comes up and there's actually a little bit of green underneath here you can see. That means it's ready to start. 
And you would only use this emergency stop in an emergency. For shutting off the machine, you would follow the procedure I'll show later in the video. But this is truly an e-stop. So if you were in an emergency situation, someone's piece of clothing gets caught in there, you'd hit the e-stop to shut the engine off right away. Like I said, ethanol free fuel. So here's the throttle control. It's a nice laser cut steel control. And you just slide this up. You can see it says stop, idle, greater, and run. So we're gonna put it about three quarters to start it up. And then this is the pull start cord. And the last time I started it, it started pretty easy. We'll see if it starts easy this time. There is no primer bulb or anything like that. You just turn the fuel on, pull the throttle up, and you're good to start. I forgot one important step. There actually is a choke on this machine. So come on back here to the back, Jennifer, and I'll show you the choke. Right here is the pull choke. So just pulling it like that chokes the machine. Once we're running, we'll push that in. I forgot to pull that out before I started pulling. I grabbed some hearing protection from Jennifer. She's videoing, but it's also important for her to have hearing protection on. And I wanted to note, this is not exactly level at this moment. So you may see some smoke coming out of the engine. I can smell a little bit of oil. Um, this is as level as I can get it in this location. I do want to leave it connected to the four wheeler. It just makes it easier for me to move it around. I'm blowing the brush just kind of against this tree, kind of like mulch. But so if you do see some smoke coming out, it's because we're not exactly level and you'd want to run this as level as you can for the situation you're in. So I'm going to go ahead and restart it. It should not need the choke now that it's been running. Maybe it will. It does take some time when you shut the engine off for the blades to stop spinning in there. There's a little bit of a learning curve to using a new piece of equipment like this. You can see this danger sign that says, no hands in shoot, use a forked push stick. And we're gonna look in the woods for a forked push stick because what happens is a lot of the pieces I'm putting in are kind of as wide as the hopper and the tops get hung up and then they don't pull down through kind of automatically and you have to kind of push them. So you can see these pieces didn't go all the way down in because even though they're just light and fluffy, they just kind of light and fluffy. <laughs> so since these don't have very much mass to them, they don't get pulled down into the chipper. 
you can see they just kind of floated on top and never got sucked in and they're you know they're not straight pieces so they kind of hang up on the edges of the hopper i think you should keep light and fluffy mm -hmm. so we're gonna we've got lots of limbs here still to cut up but you can see we're cleaning up the woods here and there's plenty of options for finding a forked push stick and lots to clean up lots to clean up but i do like the chips that it's made here on the bottom of the tree jennifer was watching it how did how did it do shooting the chips out it was good it, for the most part i mean you can see though it really does blow what six feet in diameter probably probably more than that Probably more like 10 feet in diameter. Although it could have been hitting the tree and yeah. bouncing off. But. And if you had a trailer behind it, it would be going into the trailer. You just mm -hmm. direct the little chute down. And if we, we didn't want it to go that far, we could actually take the discharge chute off and just let it blow into a pile right here behind the chipper. But I would say as far as this location goes, I mean, this huge pine tree is already kind of in the woods and right. all around it already has all the pine needles and stuff. So mm -hmm. this is probably a good location yeah and I'm really impressed with the performance of the split fire chipper I'm glad it has that nice Honda engine they're a good reliable engine we've got lots more to chip up here but that was just kind of a basic intro of how to start it and how to operate it and to follow the safety procedures and if you haven't already read that manual what do you think game plan is to get a whole bunch of brush ready like piled up and then I think that's what works best is find a location to leave the chipper bring all the pieces to it um, have them prepped you know so they're not super wide the straighter you can get them, the better, and they just kind of automatically feed through there and chip. And now, if I, you had a couple of different piles, it's nice that this is on wheels and easy to tow around, so you can move from place to place. But I don't think I'd tow this up to one limb and chip it, and then another limb and chip it. I'd bring your stuff to an area that you want to chip. Well, and I like that even though we have the room to be able to drag the brush and burn it, mm -hmm. I would way rather just be able to mulch it up and have right. it decompose. Because, I mean, brush takes a long time to decompose if you pile it up in a big stack. And we can show you there's some brush right there. That's just a big stack of brush that's been sitting for I don't know how long. And it'd be nice to chip it all up. You make some mulch around a tree or something, and it's just less to deal with. So we have more split fire 4090 wood chipper videos coming up in the future. But I think that's a good intro for you to know how to start it if, you're, if you've just received one of these and, and learning how to use it for the first time. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and we'll see you again the next time.